Boom, 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 boom. We're live. We're live. A do go 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 booga. We're live. We're live. La 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 la. Let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me. I'll, I will look at the chat just to confirm because that's what I do. Hey, Carl Fenton. Is that what people are saying? Yeah. What's up? 3DP UK, NLTMW, Colin Williamson, Mythical Cat. Been here for two hours. Thank you. Kind. We should be live. YouTube said I'm live. There it is. Sweet. And yeah. Okay. Brooks Potts can hear you. Perfect. This live stream today is brought to you thanks to Soval and their SV06. I think uh, Nero was just getting one out of the box and assembled not too long ago. And I saw Jim from Edutech has got one as well. Look at that. They hand them out like candy. Great. <sighs> I'm going to take a breath because that was fun. If you go to the description of the stream here, you'll see that they are having a contest to give one away. So hit up that link if you're interested. Andrew Rogers with a tenor. That's two fives. Thank you. That is really kind of you. Andrew Rogers. You're like an MVP, man. Welcome back from Earth. Thank you, thank you. Earth was fantastic. What a great freaking show. I, I saw all sorts of people. I talked to tons of people, did all sorts of selfies. We filmed lots and lots and lots of stuff. Uh, you would have seen yesterday, uh, we released my interview with Alan Mandic. Mandic, really? Fantastic, wonderful human. Uh, killing it over on the TikToks. Just smart as a whip. Great human. Go watch that episode if you haven't yet. Tomorrow, we do have an episode coming out where uh, we talk to Yvonne, and he was part of the team that put together the 4th and 5th and fifth Axis edition to a Prusa machine. They were at the Duet 3D booth. We talked to them. And then uh, we did film an Earth in 60 seconds. That should be fun. We've also got an interview with Wally, who does amazing custom paint jobs on models. And I've got a walkthrough of the event, just kind of some of the stuff I filmed on my new, um, here, I'll show you. Ugh. I picked up uh, this. This is a DJI Pocket 2 Content Creator Edition, something like that. Uh, it does have a little wide angle uh, lens adapter that I lost at Earth. So if anybody found it, let me know. <laughs> but it's gone, gone baby, gone. So I filmed a lot of stuff with that little camera, just walking around and filming as I'm talking to people. So we'll have a really fun episode coming out of that. That might be Saturday. Oh, excuse me. Boy, it's been a, it's been a time. Pablo, greetings from Germany. B. Gates, my friend. And I'll say, W, so glad you got to interview Wally Gator. Wally's just a... Uh, Kindness. Like if you if you take the ultimate kindness, just the ultimate definition of kindness, uh, Wally is a human version of that. Just a kind soul, wonderful human, stupid talented, stupid talented. It's fun to fun to talk to him. So yeah, we'll get that out. John Strand, greetings from Florida. Uh, greetings everyone from Tripods Garage. What's up, John? Tamsin P, greetings from London, UK. What up, governor? Is that what they say? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you know what we could do? Uh, let's see. We do have a black light. You might be able to see, yeah, some of these fluoresce, like the whites. Uh, look at that. And the, the mounts behind will fluoresce. That's kind of fun. I was looking for a glow-in-the-dark filament the other day, and I just, I was like, oh, boy, look at that one. Look at that one. It's kind of fun. I was looking for a glow-in-the-dark filament the other day, and I thought, I'll just get out the black light, whichever one fluoresces a bunch, and then glows is it. 3D Musketeers, what's up, Grant? Where's my scan, dude? I got to print that. <laughs> uh, Grant from 3D Musketeers had an, uh, an Artec, correct me if I'm wrong, Grant, scanner at the event, scanned Pooch. I know he just put out a video where he was... Um, uh, scanning a sports team. I don't remember which one. Scanned me. Oh, excuse me. Scanned me. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I got my hood up and I'm in a pose. Maybe I'll release that for people to print. That could be fun. What's up, Karen? 
Maxine Browns, I am, um, it's the Soval SV06. Apparently, I am but a, a single one of many that are getting unboxed today. I think Nero, he's either still streaming or he finished streaming. He should be done. And uh, I know Jim from Edge at Tech was going today or this week or something like that. Regardless, you'll have a bunch of people talking about this 3D printer. And if you go to the description, Soval is having a little contest where I believe you could win one. And if someone could go to that, just go to the description, click it. Can you remind me what the cost is? I want to think it's like 250 or something like that. That's what I want to say, like 250. Uh, Resin, can't wait till my Soval SV06 comes the next month. I pre-ordered the one at 199. Well, let's hope it works well. Uh, 199 seems like a, a decent like pre-sale deal for this sort of thing. Inside, we inside this box, we have another box. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can't. There we go. Ooh, handy dandy right there. I guess it was in that box. SV06. Um, they haven't specified which US or UK power adapter I get on the outside. SV06. Okay, there it is. Uh, Soval. SV06. Schaffner got this and the V400 pre-ordered. The V400 has been a lot of fun to use. And if you've got that pre-ordered, I get to think, I, I get to think it, get to thinking that you are going to like it. Uh, I know uh, some others have had it as well. I've had some really great prints from it. Um, the the FL Sun pad, the, the, the clipper pad that they include with it doesn't uh, always work on my network. And so I've had to ask them for some help because I'd love to be able to, to use the functions of Clipper, being able to um, uh, remote in and go to the IP address and have the web form and do all the stuff, but I can't, can't do that. Foam for me, foam for you. There we go, what is that? Soval, we'd love to hear from you. Okay, the leveling guide. Uh, okay, leveling guide. We'll keep that handy. Optic, hi, Joel. I went to Earth on Sunday, and I got Prusha to sign it. Were you there? Yes, I was there all day Saturday. Sorry if I didn't see you. King Tai, 239. Aaron F. Gear, 239. And no V-wheels! What's up, Eric? No V-wheels. That's fun. Let's see, here we go. It is uh, print size, 220 by 220 by 250. Printing accuracy, plus or minus 0 0.1 millimeters. Nozzle diameter, 0 0.4. Nozzle temperature, 260. Heat bed temperature, 100. All right. That's good to know. 3DHP, what's up, Jerry? What's up, Big Jano? Use with Douglas, what's going on? Uh, Big Jano, I say it looks like an Ender 3 and another popular printer had a love child. Don't they all? We'll get this built, we'll get this printing, and then we'll see what happens. I think that's gonna be fun. Uh. The Gaming Ham, 3D Printer, what's your opinion on filament from Amazon, Amazonas? Amazonas? I don't know. I just got to start a 3D printer. Uh, there's plenty of filament brands that are on Amazon that work really well. Uh, uh, off the top of my head, uh, I know a lot of people go to Amazon to get Hatchbox. I've had luck with Hatchbox. Yeah. And I think, um, what else is there? Is Prusament there? Probably expensive. Uh, Matter Hackers has their Quantum there. It's kind of expensive. Beyond all that, I'm not sure. Ugh, there we go. There it 
is. Ready, ready? If you're gonna put together a 3D printer, you might as well have some fun. You know, so far, uh, it's only been Prusa that's included uh, candy with 3D printers. I thought that was going to be one of those things that took off from other manufacturers, but uh, it didn't so far. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay. 3D Peach, uh, let's see, layout with all the colors looks great. Thanks, dude. All the colors. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hey, 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 look at that. Included with this machine is a, uh, that is a flexible textured PEI surface. That's fun. I do like that as a 3D printing surface. I think it's very uh, beginner friendly, I think. It's hit or miss for PLA for me, but we'll give it a try. Look at all these parts we got, man. Yeah. Gosh, I hope I know how to assemble this. <laughs> Let's check the chat, what are you guys doing? Uh, Big Channel, Greengate gives you filament with your Starburst order. That's fantastic. Well, and obviously printed solid gives you the airheads. Um, uh, who else? Uh, oh, it's been a while since I've opened some new filament. Protopasta gives you stickers. Of course, I've ordered lots of Protopasta for the member. You've seen the video, right? The farm is right behind me, running away. Yeah. We are, a lot of people have ordered those little uh, ghosties. You saw It's Boy in Space was uh, selling some from his TikTok, made popular there. Uncle Jesse put out a video how he was doing some. I'm selling some as well because uh, I've had requests. A lot of people want them. And so I thought, why, why not? That seems like a great idea. Okay, we're a little loose on that side, so I'll have to adjust that. Just making a mental note of things. John Gould, I don't think you have enough filament hanging on the wall yet. I have enough filament to go all the way to the ground floor and then to do the same on the other wall and then have leftovers. It's silly how much filament I have. Carl Fenton, ghosts everywhere. I know, man, I know. Uh, they must be everywhere, though, if, if people are buying them, right? That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, I know I can I can print the ghosts myself. I don't know if you can hear it. Helicopter went over. I don't know if you can hear that. I think, you know what we should do? We should just get this together. This is handy. Look at this. They're using a bimetal throat, and they give you retraction setting advisements. That's pretty cool. Good on you, Soval. Eric R3D Prince, do you own the Ford Maverick? I'm seeing a few people driving them now. Yes, I do. Uh, Ford, when they let me borrow the, the Ford Maverick for a week that I got to test out and make that video on, that was a lot of fun. Uh, then they needed it back. But I don't want to give it back because it was, it's a really, it's a really good, uh, it's a really good truck. So I went and found one and bought one and traded in my Subaru for it. Because at the time, used cars were going for a very pretty penny. And so I got, well, I'll, I'll tell you right now. The Subaru that I had, the 2020 Subaru, when I traded it back into the Subaru dealership, they essentially bought it back from me. From, I drove it for 18 months, and when I bought it, and when I gave it back to them, uh, I only got about $1,500 less than what I initially paid for it. So essentially... I had that car for 18 months for 1,500 bucks. I couldn't say no to that deal. That was, uh, that was a really great deal. I couldn't say no. The Gaming Ham, question on Thingiverse. How do you know if you can 3D print stuff to sell? Fantastic question. Fantastic question. Look at the license of a file. If the license has the C with the line through it, it means it is non-commercial. 
And that license says you cannot use that file commercially, which means you can't sell prints for profit. That's the big one. That's the big one. Look all around. And if a file has a non-commercial license, you cannot sell that file for profit. Now, you can always reach out to the designer with an idea if you'd like to sell their file and maybe do some sort of profit sharing. Uh, regardless, even if they do allow commercial sales, it's always best to reach out to the designer and say thanks or just give them a heads up. Andrew Rogers, a member for 26 months, MVP, I'm telling you. Speaking of Subaru, how did Sydney's car turn out? Turned out great. Sydney was able, the Subaru dealership was able to find a used car that had an engine that would go in her car, and so we ended up paying a few grand less for the entire thing. And uh, Sid's now in auto shop class in her high school. And just recently, she had to get the brakes done on her car. So the auto shop teacher said, go buy the brakes and we'll do that in class. And so Sydney and others in the class got to do the brakes on her car with instruction from the auto shop teacher. And it turned out great. So we're really happy with how things turned out. Tripod with a fiber. Sam Prentice was just stuffed with pancakes, and I just dropped him off at the airport. <laughs> hey, Titans Revenge is here. What's up, buddy? What is up, man? All right, all right. Come on, let's get this together. We got to see this, see if this thing prints, right? It's Liz, there you are. Oh, you all. I finally got to meet Liz in person at Earth, and just uh, just a ray of sunshine. An absolutely stellar human being, and I'm so thankful now to know her in real life. Very thankful. First thing it says to do is get the uprights uprighted. <laughs> That's the right term, right? Uprighted. Most of the time, you put on the uprights, and then you have to insert the screws from below with this machine. You can tell it has the cutout right here. You, I believe, do it from the side. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Anything that makes it easier to put together a 3D printer, I am all for. Yeah. Titan's Revenge, I wanted to be at Earth, but my condition won't let me. All good, man. Hey, listen. You are missed. And one day, when we can meet in person, you get an exemplary high five and a big old hug. I promise you. I promise you, dude. There we go. Get my screws in. Oh, come on. There it is. <laughs> The auto system muted or uh, needed tripods comment to be uh, uh, moderated because he said, he said piss. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Ken Hansen, is this one also going to be a part of the farm? Uh, probably not. Uh, this one... Uh, I don't know. This one might be part of a, of a larger giveaway. We'll see. As far as I know, though, we're just getting this out on a live stream to kind of show people what's going on with it. Eric, our 3D prints with a fiver. High five. Right back to you, my dude. High five. Heck yes. I'm really excited for everybody to see the content from Earth coming up. We just got back a rough cut for the video that goes live tomorrow. So that'll be exciting. Oh my gosh, and you know what? We might have a live stream. You might see me again live on Friday. We're working out the details right now, but there, there is a chance that we go live on Friday. And if we do, I just, I don't wanna spoil anything, but uh, we might, you might see me live on Friday. We'll see, we'll see. Hey, Nero just unboxed one of these. I don't know if he's still streaming right now, but if he is, can you go tell Taylor I said hi or something? I don't know. He's a good dude. I saw him at Earth. I've seen him at Murph. I, I can't wait to do some more collaborations with him. He was one that has uh, found an amazing following 
with streaming. He has been uh, streaming on YouTube. Did I put that on right? Yeah, I put that on right. Okay. Here, look at this. Look at this. So right here, you can see a slot or a, a slot here and a peg here, and this turns. So to put on the power box or the electronics box, you put it in like this, put it down, and then this this turns to hold it into place so it can't come out. How cool is that? Okay. I'm I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> what is this cable? It's X. So X is going to be right. Yeah. There we go. There's still a bunch of wires underneath. Going to have to figure out how to. I wonder if there's a way to. There's a little. Ah, there we go. Okay, that one just has to be right there. Pay no mind to the person on camera talking to himself. So far, it was packaged really well, and I gotta tell you, um, plugs are where they need to be. It's not so bad. And I'm fun here. Soval's in the chat. Okay, if anybody has any questions about the SV06 right here, Soval is in the chat. You can look at Soval 3D Tech. You can tag them if you wanna make sure they see it. Soval. Thanks for making this stream possible, and I'm, I'm having a good time with the assembly of this machine so far, so I'm pretty excited about that. Now to put on the display. So the display is gonna go on the front. It does have three little holes right here that match up. Oh, I see. You can, uh, it's got, you can put it at two different angles, it looks like. We'll do that one. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> oh, and this probably... Which one does it plug into? Okay, there is a plug for the connector on the back, but there's three different... I'll put it in one, I guess. XP01. It doesn't say which one to put it on, just double checking. Okay, diagonal is good. Uh, okay, so it did. It has uh, three different areas to plug in in the back. I put it in one, there's one, two, and three. M420, M420, here we go. Now to put the power supply on, looks like it's gonna go on the side and it'll go, well, before we do that, it is on 230 right now. All right, now it's 115. Now we're cooking with gas, there we go. Okay, mark this day in history. I needed an Allen key and I grabbed one and it was the right one. I think that's the first time I'm, I've ever just grabbed the correct tool when trying to put together a machine. So uh, mark this day. Three, door number one. You guys, come on. <laughs> No, it's not, is it not wanting to bite? Hmm, let's undo this one. Let's see if we can't get it to bite. There we go. Perfect.
There we go. Power supply is on. There is a plug at the bottom. Let's just connect that right now. I don't remember what these types of plugs are called. So if you remember, can you let me know? Because learning is cool. Okay. Are we on something? What the heck is going on here? There we go. Okay, so as you can tell, the frame's a little cattywampus. It's all right, Let's see what we can do. Andrew Osmond with a 50. Jeez, man, that's 5, 10, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. That is 10, 10 fives. You're an amazing human. People should write books about you. I don't really, that's not good. We're just gonna go with it for now. I'm not gonna just things. Next up, looks like, <sighs> looks like, uh, oh, the extruder, and it wants a specific screw. No, okay. MX. And three more. Okay, one of these. Perfect. Oh, three of those. Oh, okay. Got to turn towards me. Heck, Nero is calling you out from Justin D. Soval. Nero is calling you out. Oh no, is Nero? Nero having a good day? I hope so. Let's see, this doesn't. How do they want this to? Oh, okay. Slots in. Oh, nice. Nice. So it's got right here a, a, a thing that allows you to, so that you're like, what, what, what? No, no, no. You get it in, get it in here. So then you get it in here and it just locks and it just held, holds it right there. And then you've got three screws to put in. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, the feet are uh, rubber feet, Kent. The feet are rubber, so there's no adjusting them. It's okay, we'll get by. We will totally get by. That was a nifty little extruder right there. First screw is in, two more to go. Trail features with a fiver, 400 watch should be only 95 likes. Are you not entertained? All right, if everybody watching gave it one like, we'd have more than 95. <laughs> Feel free to like it. So here, you know, at the end of the day, wow, my hair is awesome. At the end of the day, uh, we are slaves to the YouTube algorithm, whether or not uh, you believe that, it's just, it's kind of where we're at. And if you have a live stream that is light more than what's there now, you have a better chance of um, being promoted and seen more. So that's why I ask you, if you have the capacity to do so, give it a like. Give it a like. Let me try a little place to clip that in. Okay. I'll take that. It's got USB C and a micro SD card reader on the uh, right, uh, right here. Right here behind the cable, you can see. The bed is a little loose, so I'm going to adjust the eccentric nuts. Oh wait, it's on rails? No, come on. 
Right. Okay. Oh, I see. So it's running bearings on um, bearings on rods on metal rods. Um, I don't believe there is a way to adjust that. No, it doesn't look to be. Uh, no, everything is. Okay, everything looks to be, uh, in that respect, not something that can be uh, adjusted. So, hmm, okay. Well, that's not, tension's good. Let me, give me a moment. Let me just make sure, because that's kind of bad. <laughs> there must be a way, right? Hmm. No, okay, so. Okay, everything uh, with the bed, so there's the metal, uh, metal rods and it has uh, uh, bearings on it and then the plate itself is attached to the bearings on the rods uh, and then um, and then there are standoffs on the metal plate that go to the heat bed. And so if I just, if I just hold this still, that right there isn't something that I can adjust. I just want to make sure before I continue on, you know. Oh wait, I can. Oh, I see where it's where its problem is. It looks like the screws underneath the PEI sheet are not screwed down. Oh, if this is the solution, I'm so so happy. <laughs> I just got to find the right tool. This one? Yep. Oh, thank heavens. Oh, thank heavens. So worried. That's good to know. So, here, check this out. I mean, we're talking night and day difference, right? Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 Timothy Plummer, five pounds. Five pounds? That's pounds, right? Printer is wobbling as it sat on the XT connector near the power supply. Um, uh, it's not sitting on it, so there are uh, there is clearance there. There is clearance. Um, let's see if I can't give it more, just to have it kind of out there. My table isn't necessarily. Oh, maybe that was it. We'll give it up to Timothy. Okay, we're not nearly as wobbly. This is great. Oh yeah, everything's turning up. Millhouse. <laughs> it's time to power it on. It is time to power it on. Wait, no, it is not time to power it on. I have to put on the spool holder. Then it's time to power it on. Oh, Larcy, okay. Listen, for everybody that suggested it, I appreciate you uh, so much. I am sorry I didn't uh, didn't believe in everybody. What am I doing? So the okay. regardless, we're here. We're a team, team awesome, and we got it done. Uh, as, as those who live stream know, it's phenomenally difficult to do troubleshooting while live streaming. Deleted. There he goes reading the instructions again. I do read the instructions. Crazy, I know.
I'll get this tightened up here. No, not that one. The big one. There we go. This is shaping up to be a decent little machine, at least assembly wise. Not mad at it. It is direct drive. PI on the build surface. Shoot. Well, let's see if I can't plug it in. Oh, crap. Did I bring a power cord? <laughs> Is it all the way down there? Okay, that's really far. Um, I've been doing stuff in the studio here, and so I'm trying to... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, this is terrible. I shouldn't do that. Okay, we'll put that back. Uh, let me find... Find an outlet strip. <laughs> what are you going to do? Or an extension cord. Or an extension cord. Here we go. Good enough. All right, extension cord is now activated. Scroll taint. <laughs> Canadian Fiber. Hey, Joel, should I get a Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus or wait for the Anchor Make? I want to upgrade from i3 Pro for 1,000 Canadian or less. Thoughts? 3D HP, yeah, I had it mounted there, and then I didn't, so... I'll get it back. Um, the, the i3 Mark III S Plus is a fantastic 3D printer, but you have to remember it's five years old. I'm not saying that so you don't get it. I'm just saying that there are newer technologies that are out that if you need something right now, might be something that you consider. Uh, the Anchor Make, I have zero experience with it. I, I don't know what it's like or what it's supposed to do or uh, anything like that. So. I would imagine you would have to find info on that elsewhere. The only person I know that actually played with one is uh, Uncle Jesse. King Ty, time to see what this baby can do. Yeah, well, let's power, well, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's on there forever. Let's turn it on. In three, two. One. Okay. The screen is not coming on. Remember I said we plugged it into one? Let's plug it into three. Someone said three in the chat, didn't they? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, it started. It's running Marlin firmware. Um, Scott, maintainer of Marlin, was at Earth. And after Earth, I was at the airport and I sat next to him at a table. And while I was sitting next to him, he was actively putting input shaper into Marlin. What a time to be alive. Hey, chat. It's always three, it's always three. Adam, uh, Adam Phantom, are you getting a Prusa XL? Uh, I am, actually. So at, um, at Formnex, when it was announced, I was one of the first to pre-order. I'm excited, so it's gonna be coming to me. Print some TPU. I, I mean, I mean. Aoki Omar, hey Joel, can you make a review of the 3D Chameleon, please? Uh, I will at some point in the future, maybe. I know that uh, Bill's a good dude, and he's been working on it nonstop. That guy's just got nothing but ideas. So, 
Um, it's really, really cool. In fact, on the, oh my gosh, you can't see me. Hey guys. On the episode I'm aiming for Saturday, uh, I talked to Bill about the 3D Chameleon and he shows me two prints to compare and it blew my mind. Blew my mind. Oh, it does say X3 here. Okay. On the electrical connections. Got it. Well then good, we're good. We're good. So now we go to the bed leveling thing. Well, here, I, I well, I guess we should level the bed. Yeah. Okay. Bed leveling. Just right there. Um, auto Z align. Oh, so it's going to bring Z up. I guess. Maybe? I don't know, we'll find out. Oh, I see. So right behind here, there's the stopper right here and a stopper right here and it brings those up to that. It looks like, okay, well, it's, it's going down, 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 down. Does the SVO4 have an all metal hot end? I don't know. Simon Woodworks, do you have any experience with Modex machines? I do not. Imagine it's too far. Reading is hard. Believe me, it is. Incoming mob of Nero viewers. I love Nero. Shout out to Nero. Is Nero in the chat too? Because Nero should be here. Deleted. It is quiet. It's fairly quiet. There's a little bit of fan. It's quieter than the bamboo, but I mean, that's not hard. Everything's quieter than the bamboo. <laughs> it is taking its time. I'm. Yeah. Yeah, it's got itself a little proby. Okay. Oh, I see. Here we go. Now it's going to go to the top. Perfect. JaegerCon Gaming, any thoughts on the SVO1 Pro? No thoughts. I've never heard of it, and I've never used it. Uh, just 3D me. It is an all-metal hot end, it looks like. I believe it's going to go... Well, it says 260C, but I thought there was mention of 300C. I guess we'll have to see. Nero! If all goes well, you're getting a redirect. Nero has a wonderful channel. He's also a fantastic hugger. Like, if you want a good, old-fashioned Canadian hug... Nero's your guy. Do it. Do it. Just do it. Come on. Do it. Just do it. It's going to make noise when it gets to the top. Be prepared. Let's see how even it is. It's a witch making. Okay. So this one was uh, hit first. So the axis was a little... Weird. Nero 3D and their viewers just joined. Say hello. Hello to Nero's viewers. Welcome to my channel. I guess you can do redirects in YouTube now. That's pretty fantastic. I have a filament wall. I should have led with that. Here we go. It's now slowly lowering. Slowly. Just thinking about it. Y'all good over here? Hello, hello, hey, hi, hi everybody. Look at that, raids in YouTube. I didn't know that was a thing, but that's great. Hey all Nero's viewers. Uh, I hope, uh, I didn't get a chance to see Taylor running with this machine. I, I hope it did him well. Um, Let's see, he's up in Canada, so I, I know he's powered by maple syrup and aprons. Us here, though, it's Red Bull and pancakes. <laughs> Get in there. Okay. Are we at a, okay, oh, we're at a point now. Okay. Two, click the bed leveling auto home. Okay, auto home. Bed, two, bed leveling auto home. Okay, bed leveling, auto home. Homing requires machine heat up automatically. I'm gonna proceed. 
It's taking the nozzle to 120C and the bed to 60C. Look at that, we're just moving right along. Cheers, dinner time for me. Machine did well, by the way, but enjoy the build. Thanks, Nero. Listen, Nero, you're a beautiful human. I love you, and I hope you have a good dinner. He printed the doggo, so do the benchy. Well, conspiracy aprons. Thanks, Nick. Nick. <laughs> they, uh, they sent, I said, they, they sent a, um, a file to me, you see. So now I have to find the file and put it on the SD card. Oh my goodness. We have, uh, the family has iPhones and we have family sharing and I was just notified that my son wanted to get a certain app. I'm like, I approve. I approve. I do like the rail system, but I hate the build volume. Titan's Revenge, yeah, it's one of those things. It seems to be that that build volume just over the past couple of years kind of became a de facto standard. And um, even, even with brand, brand new machines like the Bamboo, it's 256, 256, 256. So we're still within that. That 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 200 something, 200 something, 200 something seems to be the de facto build volume for machines that are like 99 to a thousand dollars. I feel like. Oh good, the dogs are. I don't know if you can hear the dogs, but they're barking. Oh, they're barking. Let me find that file. They're only barking because they're they're friendly. Sorry, I'm just whatever. <laughs> oh, you know what? Wait a minute. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, this, uh, okay. So they sent me, a, a specifically, they sent me a G code file to put um, on the SD card to run, specifically. How you doing, chat? Yeah, specifically. So I copied it over to the SD card and I looked and it's 77 bytes long, 77 bytes. And the contents of that G code is just 3dbenchy.g code. So that's not good. That's not good at all. I guess we should go look in and see if they've got a, a better G code file. See, where are they? I just gotta find the email because uh, there it is. Okay. Well, uh, this is rather unfortunate. So, initially, Soval had sent a G code to me to run. And uh, I was like, cool. So I copied it to the SD card. Apparently that name already existed. So I was like, okay, this is an updated one. Replace it but the one they had sent is invalid G code. Uh, the G code is just a text file that says SS3DBenchy.G code. So the Benchy G code is gone because I'd overwrote the one that was on the SD card 
So we're going to not do that one. We're going to do, uh, we're going to, gonna do the dog. Okay, I did the auto home. That's good. Probe Z offset. Right. We are, hold on, <laughs> something's wrong. That, what is going on? Okay, we're at 120, good. Bed leveling, auto home. It's pretty quiet. Like my, my ear is down here, it's quiet. There we go. Good, good, good. Stay down there. Okay. Now we can go bed leveling, probe offset. There we go. We're feeling some. There we go. Then you got to save it. Store the settings. Good. Now, now we can, uh, let's see, can I move? Pair, move. Just have it go up a little bit, because I want to add in some filament. Preheat PLA. There we go. So the bed's already at 60C. It's going to take the nozzle to 185C. 185C. You put the SD card in back here. <sighs> Shoot him, car man. Seems very slow. It's, uh, well, it's not like clipper fast. Oh yeah, Mobius, we'll show that, sure. Do you really go in public with that rat's hair nest? You bet I do. Who, who cares? It's hair, who cares? Who freaking cares, man? Doesn't matter. Uh, we are preheating, okay. And we have a small smidgen of filament. Load it up. There we go. Should poop some out. Ooh, it's green. They were testing with green. That's exciting. Sure, we purged some green. And that's what I made, art. Are you kidding? Don't worry, it prints faster than it calibrates. Fantastic. Chris Chamberlain, how was Earth? It was amazing. It's a bunch of fun. Let's see what happens if we print something. Uh, we will do the dog. Okay. It should be, it should start soon. The platypus, I love the hair. The hair loves you. I just confirmed. Guffy Scotland, even they wouldn't use their sample filament. Well, that's not necessarily true because they might've had their own sample filament, but in green. That's entirely possible. Well, we should see it print. Maybe. Spitting out a bead, stuck to the build plate. But not very well, might have to like, see if I can 
Probe offset, here we go. Let's just take that down a little bit. Perfect! We are making a dog. We are making a dog. BTR Plumbing, what's up? Member for 18 months, thank you very much. Obviously, if any of you want to become a YouTube member, there's a button down below that you can click, and it happens. Glad to see you live, sorry I'm late. That's all right, that is all right, my friend. That is all right. Sebastian, they say that they sent you new G code. When did they send it? When did they send that G code? Let's find out. Because um, the last G code I have from them is uh, not correct. Please check the G code. Let's see. Uh, hi, Joel Dave, please check the G code. So I got an email saying, check the G code, and I did, and there is no, uh, oh, good. So uh, David, and to everybody watching, just, I'm David, I know you're watching, and because I don't want to have to text with you while I'm on the stream. The G code that as Sobol sent was invalid. G code is just a text file, and in this G code that they sent, it just said the name of the file. There was no G code in the file. Sobol did not send a new G code. They sent invalid G code. So that's why we're printing the dog. Soval, if you're in the chat, if you could, if you want to send new, 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 new uh, G code, uh, you could. The G code you sent was invalid. But if you want to send new G code, I can stop this one. Uh, just send it to the email. David will, producer David will put it in the share, and I can copy it over. But I figure you might as well let the dog run until you send. Uh, valid G code. I will have this laptop open and ready to receive the G code while the stream is happening over here. They just said they sent it in the chat. Okay. Let me go to my, my computer. Okay. I, I have nothing. I have nothing in my email. So if they did just send it, it does not exist. Uh, there we go, okay. Thanks, Soval. Yeah, check it again. Darren, cherry picked G code. Well, not exactly, right? I don't think I don't think we can call the G code cherry picked. But if it's G code created with their version of Cura with the, the proper settings, then that's fantastic. Eric R three D prints. Are you still doing fan mail Friday? Sort of, kinda. I still have a lot of packages to get through. My wife's going to help me out with that. We're going to. Get it done before December. Uh, we do have a live stream scheduled on December 15th to benefit Seattle Children's Hospital. And we're uh, partnering, partnering with my friend Bender over at 95.7 The Jet. Uh, it's a radio station here in Seattle. And it's just going to be a wonderful time. It, the stream will happen December 15th. It's going to be the massive giveaway stream, but it's also going to be a way for people to be able to donate to Seattle Children's Hospital and all the fan mail Friday money that's come in. That's what's going to that's when it's going to go to Seattle Children's Hospital. Hey, maybe 
The dog will finish, and then we'll get new G-code. <laughs> so far, uh, it's weird being in the center frame. So far, <laughs> this 3D printer uh, was really easy to assemble. Um, thanks to the chat for making sure I got this plug out of the way, which I did. Um, the voltage on the power supply easily indicated and easily switched over. The, the frame is sturdy. Um, the screws for the bed, I just had to tighten down a little bit. It does come with a powder coated PEI sheet for the build plate that you can remove and flippity flop around. It has USB-C and a micro SD slot on the back. Um, I think the price for this is like 250 bucks, 239 bucks. It's, it's direct drive. It's got a bimetal heat break. That's not bad. That's really not bad. That's really not bad. The Finch, loving the filament wall. Thank you very much. I also love the filament wall. And uh, my wife did the paint job of the, the black paint, if you remember the episode where we did that. Oh, I, I, I have some slots missing. Over here, let's see, oh, here it is. So I just saw, uh, I just saw these people at Earth. This is cookie cad filament. Look at that. Look at the look at the the change in color. The things that you can create with that are amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's gonna be amazing. Your new filament wall made Loyal jealous. He just had to completely redo his filament wall. I saw the pictures, Alex. What was happening? Like, was he just redoing the wall just to redo it? I saw uh, the Daft Punk helmet I gave him is still center, and he's got filaments and filaments and helmets and stuff, but um, it was, I thought it looked good before. Like, I thought it looked good before. It looks, it looks great. Like, the lighting in Loyal Studio is fantastic. Nadel Sunrise, Sunrise. Jesse L3D, 239 is what I paid for my Ender 3 Pro when they first released it, right? So if you, if you consider the upgrades that are on this machine, 239, that's not a bad deal. Not a bad deal at all. Uh, if you go to the link in the description, they are giving one away and you can use a code uh, to get some extra entries. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the assembly. Uh, I do see that Soval releases the firmware on their website. I did a, a, a Google search for Soval and firmware and they do have a section so you can download the firmwares. This is running Marlin, so once this is released, or out in the public, or I think I think they will get the firmware up there, which is great. We got new G code. That's fun. Hey, we got new G code. This is exciting. Saving it. Okay. Good. Good. Okay, okay. I'm gonna stop the presses. We have new G code. <laughs> Practical Printing, what's up, everybody? Uh, Chris, Practical Printing is in the chat. Uh, if you're, if, just, just tell him congrats. I can't tell you what for, but just tell him congrats. Nate L, uh, 3D printer, Enercubic finally released the Cobra firmware. I, I heard about that. That's great. So the dog was looking good. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, it's sticking really nicely. Yeah. It was looking really, really good. But we have new G-code. I don't know. It's like that... Um, you remember in Disney DVDs when they used to have that opening at the beginning that had uh, like footage from all the from all the uh, different movies they'd put out? And, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean is under the Disney um, umbrella. Um, it was always fun because there's Johnny Depp as uh, Captain Jack being like, "We have our heading," and then they went off into this, you know, "Welcome to the wonderful world of Disney, whatever." And so I had the SD card, and I really I wanted like, "We now have our heading." I, w I wanted to be all excited like Captain Jack, Captain Jack Sparrow. Well, I'm going to put this G code right there. Okay, we're good. It's it copied. Ejecting. Now, let's do it for realsies. 
Me print no dog here. Benchy all the way. Here we go. Yeah, that's a team effort right there. Soval, if you're still in the chat, I just want to tell you, thank you for the G-code. I've added it to the micro SD card. We put it in the machine, and we are now going to be printing that Benchy. We're heating up. The bed's got to go to 60C. It's at 58C right now. Uh, they don't heat the bed and the nozzle at the same time. Bed's at 60C. Once it stabilizes, the nozzle will go to like 185, 190C. And then, and then we are good to go. Hey, wait a minute. Okay, so while we're waiting for this, um, 613 watching, only 270 likes. Okay, how about this? To get some likes, let's see. Tell me a filament, and I can bring it out and tell you about it, like if you want. I can, I can bring it out. I got lots of filament back here. Is there a specific color you want to see? So, Ball, the early bird price of 239 may be unavailable next week, according to our estimate. Okay. So 239 is the early bird price. I don't know what the final price is, but 239 for this, uh, if the print quality is any indication, if it continued with this, it'd be a decent deal. Uh, Aero 90, does Soval slice my 3D files for me too? Uh, I'm sure they include some on the SD card. One of the things you have to remember, any 3D printer sent to you usually has default sliced models on the SD card for you to run as tests, just to verify that you're able to assemble the machine correctly and everything is going according to plan. The file that was on the SD card, they said, was outdated. Okay. Something happened and I don't know what it was. Are you kidding? I want to know, can you keep filament in the open like that? Is the room dehydrated? No, I have HVAC in the, in the, the studio here, but you have to remember in the Pacific Northwest, humidity isn't really a concern for us. You wouldn't be able to do this in some place like Florida. I doubt it. Make it a Benchy. And in white filament, which is awesome to show on camera. <laughs> so, yeah, it didn't sound good. Uh, my guess is sensorless. Yeah. Matthew DiStefano, how do you keep humidity down on the filaments on the wall? Um, I have an HVAC system here. And I think it just works. I don't know, I've never had, I've had filaments open and on the wall here in the Seattle area Many, many, many times. Here we go. We'll do that. And then I can see the chat. It's perfect. It's perfect. Look at that little wheel going. Tim Tennis, how are those steppers feeling? Well, let's take a look. Um, lightly warm. Lightly warm. Practical printing with two bucks. That was just the printer singing Baby Shark. <laughs> nice, Chris. Dad joke. Hobby Hands with a fiver. High five. My first printer was an MBOT clone. 12 printers, 12, 12 printers later, they just get better. Can't wait for Voron Speed to be standard. Show me weirdest filament on the wall. Weirdest filament on the wall. <sighs> okay, weird. Ah, here we, well. Here we go. How about this? This is uh, from Intamsys. This is Ultim 9085. This is PEI filament. And this amount right here, uh, this is uh, 500 grams. 500 grams of PEI, probably, I don't know, four or 500 bucks. That's kind of weird, right? Just out in the open. I would need like a massive oven to, to uh, dry that. So, you know, I'm not gonna be able to do that. What other weird stuff do I have? That's not weird. I mean, it's, it's kind of standard, right? 
What is this? Oh, look at this. This is flexible material. It's a transparent, flexible material from 2016. All right, that's kind of weird. Cool. Ultim is money. Alan Mitchell, now that filament is wet. You bet it is. You bet it is. You have to have Ultim under a heated vacuum to, to get a lot of that last bit of moisture out. But the machines that print with it are also money, money, money. <laughs> How good is your orange filament? I had orange and it would get so brittle just after 12 hours it would snap in multiple places on the way to the printhead. 3D printed hardware. Uh, the orange Pet G that I got from Prusa doesn't seem to do that. Um, I do keep that in a sealed bag with desiccant when not use most of the time. The orange, the orange I got from um, Canadian Filaments, that pumpkin orange looking one, uh, that was beautiful filament, not brittle at all. Not brittle at all. Uh, most flexible filament. Um, most flexible filament, it might be this one. This is, um, fiber, fiber, uh, fiberology called Fiberflex 300. And it feels like it just feels like a rubber band, like a legit rubber band. That's probably the most flexible one I have at the moment. What's this? Oh! <laughs> I showed you Ultim. Here's Peak from Intamsis. Here's some Peak filament. 500 grams of Peak. That's money. There we go. <laughs> Alessandro Fonseca. Any glittery filament? Um... Yeah, I've got some 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 glittery stuff. Nothing specifically glittery. I just have some random glittery stuff. Uh, someone said, "Can we get a closer look at the print?" Um, I can't really. I am down cameras at the moment, so I don't have the ability to get uh, closer. I could try. Yeah, let's see, the recycled filament from Maker Fair OC. That is the LDPE, and it is... Did I take that home? I might have taken the LDPE home. I certainly didn't put it up anywhere. That's right, uh, Polystruder gave me a roll of LDPE. Nate L, have you seen the new Protopasta Endless PLA? Nebula Silver Silk was made and dedicated was made and dedicated to my daughter. The Protopasta team is just amazing. I simply have no words for the team there. Need to high five you soon. Nate, that's wonderful. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm excited. I'll text Alex and see if I can't get a few rolls down here. I would uh, I'd love to love, love to see that in person. Webcam at Joel. Thanks, Darren. I've got no webcams here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute, hold the phone. Wait a minute. I might have a way to do this. Okay. Okay, I might be able to do this. We might be able to do this. I'm excited at the opportunity in front of me. Um, we need, okay. Two, two, full. Good. Okay, good, good, good. We're getting there. Now we need an HDMI cable. Usually those are easy to find, but not as easy as they used to be. Hold on just a sec. I'm looking. Might have an HDMI cable. Maybe. We'll see. At least the printer's going.
Ha-ha! Found an HDMI cable. I be able to make this work. Like, I am shocked. Shocked. In fact, in fact, could I get an Owen Wilson wow in the chat, please? Could I get an Owen Wilson wow in the chat, please? Wow. Just a, just a quick Owen Wilson wow in the chat, please. That's, I, just need, I just need a few. That'd be great. If you could. Wow. 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 Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, that's weird, but okay. Shiver me timbers. Uh... Oh, okay. Okay, hold on. Let me let me export the right LUT for that. Gee, many Christmas, you guys. I need to raise the camera up, just like, ah, you know what? The cookie cat's full. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> we're almost there. Now we're cooking with gas. Best thing ever. Okay, and then where's, where's all my tape? That nah, doesn't matter. Okay, ready? Ready, ready? Ready? It's a little much. I agree. But that's not bad, right? It's a little bit better now, right? It's supposed to be, supposed to be an all metal hot end, yes. Hey, Ken Gross, new member. Thanks, man. Hobby hands with two. Past job used to machine ultim. Oh, yeah. Super money. Much better, right? That's not bad. Okay, let me find some, let me find some tape. Because, my goodness. My goodness. What I can do is use another spool of filament. That's a great idea, Joel. There we go. That's fun. Oh, can I do picture in picture? Yes! Yes! Oh, happy days. Happy days are here again. Yeah, it's a little bright. It's, it's white filament. It's white filament. I mean, white, yes, the Benchy is blown out. If you want, I can take it down a little bit. It's up to you guys. Okay, leave it as is or slightly darker. Leave it as is or slightly darker. Leave it as is or slightly darker. I just need to know. I, I just need to know. You need to try TPU on this extruder. Lost in Tech had some problems with it slipping and escaping. Oh, okay. Titan's Revenge. <laughs> Hashtag production value. I love it. Andrew Rogers, full send, as is. Darker, 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 darker. That's a lot of darkers in a row. I gotta go, I'm sorry, Andrew. That was five in a row. 
Five in a row. There we go. It's just a tad darker, just a little bit. And games who call it the Bloom Effect. Ben, yes, it does run Marlin. I went a little bit darker, just a little bit. I think we're good, right? Okay, that's better, that's better. <laughs> lighter, lighter, stop it. Stop it, you guys. <laughs> my goodness. Fix some dude. Wow, this stream got dark quick. Oh my goodness. So just so everybody knows, just so everybody knows, we are at ISO equivalent 1600 F8. Thanks, Revenge. I liked the flat profile better, but the Da Vinci Resolve in my head is... is <laughs> Dude, I usually shoot uh, C-Log 2 on that thing and then bring it into Da Vinci with a, uh, a color card. Lucius Simmons, what happened to Sean? Uh, Sean doesn't work here anymore. He went home and he works for another company. I think it's... Uh, shoot, I forgot where he works, but he's back in Michigan. If you ever go through Michigan, you should just wave. He'll wave back. <laughs> Shitty kid, F8 is okay. Not real, can you zoom in? Camera does need blue. I can zoom in. There we go. I zoomed in a bit. That's not bad. Can you make my window larger? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Scott Johnson, your printer is so much quieter than Nero's. Really? Okay. Thanks, Revenge. When are you coming on my show, Joel? I don't, do you have a show? I know you got a YouTube. I, I didn't know you. Where, you do you stream on Twitch? I think I forget. Dustin Speed, thanks, Joel. I had to stop and get my own milk duds on the way home. Yeah, it's, uh... That's the thing. You got to get your own milk duds. Uh, let's see. Time's Revenge. When can I go on? I don't know. So, let's see. Um, next week, next week, I'm in Malta. Thanks to the Construct 3D, 3D printer. Remember? Okay, cool. So, the episode we did from TCT360, like, a while ago, uh, we talked to... Jacob and his mom, Therese, and they are Construct 3D, and they have this new 3D printer that looks promising, uh, built by them. Uh, we are going to Malta to take a look at the printer and do some incredible things that I can't wait for you to see. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, I believe we're at Form Next in the middle of November. Let me turn up the speed. The printer is quiet. Yeah, it's really quiet. It's surprisingly quiet. Cheetah Kid, Malta in Europe. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, Ben, you get that one through. <laughs> Give noob butt grabs. Oh, I will grab noob's butt, I promise. If he's, if he's okay with it. Oopie, as a sad I've been, printing, I've been printing for two years and haven't made a Benchy. Not sad at all. You should print whatever you want. You should absolutely print whatever you want. Yeah, it's super quiet. Like here, I'm standing right up here. Yeah, quiet. It's like quiet. Cheetah Kid, you need to take your 3D printer to Malta. No, there will be 3D printers for me in Malta. Don't you worry. NLTMW, yes. Oh, we'll have to see Bella get some, get some pupper scritches in. Hey, Maker Viking, what's going on?
It's a really good view of the hot end. I have a, um, a, a big television right here so I can see what's being sent out, and uh, it looks pretty good. Robin Visser, you can hear the filament melt. <laughs> hey, do you think we can, hey, you know what? If, if, uh, if anybody can get 3D Maker Noob into the chat, if anybody can get uh, 3D Maker Noob into the chat, if he types something, then we should all, we should all, we should all put like hashtag uh, noob butt or something like that. See if, we, see if we can get Noob in the chat and then we'll, we'll, we'll tell him we're gonna collectively send him a new butt or something. Oh man, I should have brought water. Imagination too far, I'm grabbing butts seems like a lawsuit waiting to happen, which is why I said if noob is okay with it. I don't want to grab anybody's butt without their permission. That would just be terrible. Uh, love people, thanks for joining us. If you do have to go soon, we'll make sure this venture gets done. So one of the things I've always wondered about this sort of design, and I think I mentioned it in my uh, Ender 3S1 review, the, the fan that blows on the filament, when it's in that orientation, can it pick up latent heat from the bed and not cool the filament as efficiently? I've always wondered that. Is, is that a thing? Butt grabbing must be consensual. I agree, Andrew. Peter Nickerson, turn it up to speed. Yes, I do see all of those. I do see those. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll see if I can't turn up the speed. Speed. All right, I went to 200. Let's see what happens. Two hundred percent. Here we go. Do I? Have, I should increase the temperature a little bit too, just in case, right? Because it's only at like one eighty-five. We'll go one Grabbing the heat from the bed has to be consensual. <laughs> RC Maniac, what's up? Hey, RC Maniac, you were at Earth. I don't think I talked to you. Euro, 200% works fine, but we'll get some artifacting. That's fine. That's fine, isn't it? Isn't it? I think it is. How does the front of the benchy look? Uh, it looks good. There's a little booger on the bed from when it was doing the, uh, the, the stuff that oozed out before it started doing the skirt. There's a little booger there. I'm just gonna leave it there. Look at it go. It's just going. It's moving. Just 3D me, ever since getting the FL Sun Super Racer, all printers feel so much slower. I need to clipper every other printer now. Uh, the FL Sun V400, imagine that, imagine the speed of the Super Racer with a little bit more reliability and clipper, and that's what you get on the V400. Gundam Z145, for some reason watching this, I realized how old my Robo R1 Plus. Wow, an R1 Plus, that is ancient. Awesome. <sighs> Leonie, FDM, then SLA printing. What do you think will be the next technology in 3D printing? I think, uh, I think what we're gonna see is more, more craziness coming from the materials of those types. We're gonna be able to see, oh, excuse me, crazy stuff being melted. There's like a fuzz on this. Did I get it? Yeah, I got it. Um, being able to melt other polymers, I think it's gonna be cool, but, in, but for SLA and MSLA, being able to uh, cure certain polymers, 
I think, I think the good stuff's gonna be in the materials. That's what I think. I think the, uh, the stabilizer was going nuts in the camera. Robin Visser, in 2,000 years, when humanity is gone, all that's left are going to be millions of benchies. Well, by that time, the robot overlords are actually going to consume all of, the ben all of the benchies and melt them down into raw materials to build up the robot army that comes after us. But if they do that, most likely, they're just going to be PLA robots, and so we just have to wait for a sunny day. And then the glass transition temperature takes over, and then we just push them over. Peter Nixon, what do you think of the Cobra Max? Uh, go check out my review. I reviewed the Cobra Max uh, a while ago, and I found it to be a fantastic machine. It's a low-priced, large-format 3D printer. And that and the, uh, the Mingda Magician Pro or X or whatever that large one is, uh, similar, similar idea. From Luppy, when printers become large enough, would you download a car? You bet I would download a car. Jesse L3D, do you think we will ever see laser curing FDM at the hobby level? I do not. And I don't know what laser curing FDM is, so you're going to have to help me out with that one. <laughs> Andrew Rogers, so Benchynet is what I should worry about, not Skynet. That's right, Benchynet. All the Benchies eventually will have a consciousness, right? You know, at some point, the Benchies are going to pass a Turing test, and we're just screwed. Oh, so do a full-size Joel to fool the robots. That's perfect. Zombie hedgehog. Flexum guy. <laughs> That's fun. I mean, it has a direct extruder, so no idea why they put a Bowden on the Cobra Max. Thank you. Uh, I mean, a, a Bowden-style extrusion system is going to offer you the ability to go a little bit faster just because there's less weight on the head. But with the advent of things like Clipper and RepRap firmware and then input shaping and Marlin, then we can tune out any speed artifacts. So, I mean, why not just go direct drive and, and be better? I think he means the gel UV printing in home. Oh, oh, that, that. That makes sense. James Brown, yes, the SV06, it is direct drive. Alex, laser cured FDM, isn't that the, oh, so they call that GDP, gel deposition uh, technology. G, uh, no, gel, gel, GPT, GP, Gel deposition, I think it's GPT. Well, regardless, when the, when the gel comes out and then the UV cures it as it's uh, going out, I think it's what you're talking about, right? Because the gel itself is an acrylic-based gel that cures at 405 nanometers or you know whatever the, the standard UV lights are, and so that has that ring of lights to do a cure in place. That stuff is cool. Ideal grain, how much compromise is in this machine versus more expensive mainstream alternatives like the Ender 3 S1? This seems to offer an all metal hot end and uh, under 250, appreciate you and what you do. Well, thanks, Ideal Grain. Um, I don't know, without having a little bit more time into it, um, I, I, don't, I don't know the, it, it does seem to have a fairly advanced feature set for the price tag. And it does look to be performing well. I did turn up the speed to 200, and like Taylor said in the chat, it will probably just show some speed artifacts. But again, we are just turning up the speed and expecting the sliced values to, to be okay. We could probably get away with faster print speeds as long as we tuned the settings in our slicer. But right now, uh, this machine, 239 for the early bird, seems to be a really good deal. Seems to be a really good deal.
David Kwashnick just got the Revo Hamera XS. Now I need to figure out how to install it on my Sidewinder X1. There should be some guides out there, I think. I don't know if you have to 3D print any parts. Tof, uh, Tofe McGrant, hello from France. Great channel and nice haircut. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Wish list contains paid promotion from what company? Soval. Soval's paying a promotional fee to have this showcased on a live stream here. Companies do that. But here's where it gets really interesting. Even though a company like Soval is still paying to have access to this, to, to have me live stream this content, it's still crazy because I don't open the box beforehand and everything that happens in front of me happens live and in real time. You know, companies do pay for ad spots or there are sponsored episodes of the show on my channel and on other channels where, you know, companies get to help with the content and then they get to see a cut and then there's a notes pass and then they, you know, then, and then stuff is released and it says contains paid promotion. That's good. What's really cool about a live stream being a paid promotional thing is that Soval is just paying a promotional fee so that I'm live streaming this, but I still have to do it live and I'm still not opening the box before we go live. And so it's like, uh, it's like skydiving, not knowing if you have your parachute. You could be well prepared and know that you've probably packed your parachute well, but there's still no guarantee. So it's kind of fun. Titan's Revenge, whoa, paid, must be nice. We should talk, dude. We should talk. Oh, Peter Nixon, by the way, hell from Mexico, hello. Chapter 92, are you gonna do an FL Sun V400 review? I don't know the answer to that. I've gotten some fun prints off of it, but I've also um, had some problems with the speed pad, and so I've emailed FL Sun, and I just wanna get those all worked out and some proper answers in to make sure that uh, it either gets fixed or there's there's something that I can tell about it. I might. I might. Um, it's still weird though because the FL Sun is a pre-sale, and so it could be that what I review isn't necessarily what you and the audience is going to see. So I don't know how valid the review would be. Dewitt 3D live is always best. It's honest. You know it. You know it. 3D printer hardware, or like skydiving and not knowing if you have the full G code. In, uh, in the radio world, there's, some, there's a term called radio skydiving. Uh, you know, in the radio world, there is the dump button. So in case someone says something that they can't let go on the air, they can hit the dump button and it dumps out that audio. Um, but the dump button has to fill up. It's like one of those things where it's, it's a technological advancement. And so as there are spaces in the broadcast, like if I say, hello, how are you? The dump button knows that it can, it can recover some of that, that space there with that, or re recover some of the time with that space I said between words. So radio skydiving is when someone in studio says a swear word into the microphone and then hits the dump button. They call it radio skydiving because that you don't always, there, there's no guarantee that the dump button is gonna work. It should work. It's supposed to work, but there's no guarantee if it works. And so they call that radio skydiving. I thought that was kind of fun. Ivan Rough 48. Hello, Joel. How are you? I don't like that layer fan at all. You don't. Why not? Renato Luna, it'd be nice to have a WERF. I would go. I think there's a lot of people trying to work in some sort of West Coast Rep Rap Festival. Um, there's been people all up and down the West Coast suggesting cities. Uh, I know that further inland, like, uh, like in Colorado, people have been thinking about it. I don't know. We, we've got some options. We do have some options. Uh, Luppy, have you ever used another Soval printer before this one? I have not. Not Neo. Does the heated bed have isolation at the bottom? Uh, can you be more specific? I don't know exactly what you're, what you're asking there. Andrew Rogers, I thought the Rocky Mountain Rep Wrap was just in its uh, ideation phase. Like, we don't know for sure if it's coming, right?
And gross, this looks better than the Soval resin printer. I have no experience with their resin machines. Mythical Cat, well, that's really kind of you. Uh, I, I'm really glad you like the content that we produce here. That's nice of you. Thank you so much. Jesse L. Phoenix Rep Rap, there we go. One Rep Rap Festival per time zone. It's not a bad idea. The next decade, yeah, surf. <laughs> Surf. Not Neil, I'm talking about heat isolation. I, I don't know what heat isolation means, and so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to learn me on that one. Do you mean like the uh, the ins the insulation on the bottom of a heat bed? RC Maniac, did you get a chance to record with the Opulo at Earth, the pick and place machine? No, um, I didn't get a chance to talk to the Opulo team. The only time I saw them was at uh, Murph. That was the only time I got to talk to them. Alan Mitchell, yeah, Vegas has been thrown out for a West Coast Rep Rap Festival. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, Seattle too. Portland, Oregon as well. Um, lots of good ideas for Rep Rap Festivals, honestly. Uh, okay, insulation. It does not have insulation. No. Um, but it wouldn't be that hard to add. It looks like there's a space there where you could put some insulation in. Hard pass on Vegas Rep Rap Festival. I hate that place. Well, Andrew, think of it, don't think of it as like downtown Vegas. Think of it as somewhere else, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'd give it a chance. I think I if it was Vegas, I would give it a chance. I'm gonna make that boat, that little, little boat. Robert 0610, hello. Newbie here, been watching you for about two months. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, thanks for watching. Lots of really cool stuff happening here and on lots of other channels that have 3D printing com uh, content. Just glad to have you on board. Welcome to the show. Fatal Circuit, what are the print dimensions? Uh, 220 by 220 by 250. And could that printer uh, do a one-shot full-size Daft Punk helmet? It could not. It could not. Titan's Revenge, yeah, Chelsea got COVID while in Vegas. It's, it sucks. I know her and G are just feeling super down, so hopefully, hopefully they recover fast. And uh, I know she loves modeling stuff. So I hope that, uh, I hope she's able to recover quick. Uh, David with Fresno. <laughs> yeah, definitely the Goshen vibes. Peter Nick said, what do you think of the drone flying 3D printer concept? We actually talked to a school that had a drone as a 3D printer, and uh, it was interesting. Oh, excuse me. We, we talked to them at, at um, TCT360 in the UK, over in Birmingham. Zombie Hedgehog, Joel, what is your process for e-steps and flow calibration? Uh, I don't currently have a process for that. I usually just look up a blog or a YouTube of someone telling me how to do it, and then I do it. That's what I did for color grading on video, and uh, I just did it enough to where I remember now. Gianpaolo uh, Pacciolo? I don't know. Hello from Spain. Hello from, uh, hello from the US here in Seattle. Ivan Ra, don't like the layer fan, gets direct heat from the bed and a filament comes off. Yes, exactly. I think the exact same things. Oh my goodness. I do think that. Ugh. Diops, do you know anything about the Anycubic Cobra Neo? I don't. Uh, I don't have access to that machine yet. I know um, I'm in constant talks with Anycubic. Not sure if I'm going to get that one. I know, I believe it was Sam Prentice that, that had the Neo. I think, uh, regardless, I know there's content out there. I don't seem to have that one. Tobias, hey, high five from Cape Town, South Africa. Hello, my friend, welcome to the show. Zombie Hedgehog, what is a Swatch truck? I don't know what a Swatch truck is. DeWitt, do you wanna see the Death Racers at Murph 2023 or something different? Oh yeah, Death Racers, uh, are gonna be at every Rep Rap Festival, I, I think. And Sam's got some crazy ideas. So I, I can't wait to see what happens. 
Glenn Hoag, you got it after Murph, so I'm asked up for Earth. Good idea, man. Good idea. Peter Nixon, Joel, can I get a hey? -ya? No. <laughs> I can't do it. I don't have that, I don't have that vocal range. Can I get a hey? I can't do that. <laughs> Angus MacGyver, is the Sobol open source? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I know it's using Marlin, and I did see that Sobol does post the firmwares on their website. I don't know if the machine itself is open source, though. Ronald DHS, why didn't you race at Murph? I raced at Murph. Uh, producer David was at Earth and racing. Looks to be running uh, Marlin. I don't know which version. Version, I would have to connect a computer once it's not running. Roberts, what do you think about the Creality Wi-Fi box now? Um, when I got it, it was garbage. And I think it got thrown away. But there are ways to flash other firmwares on it, so I kind of wish I didn't throw it away. <laughs> so there you go. Cheetah Kid, thanks for joining us. Zombie Hedgehog, Swatch Truck is my little calibration tool on printables. People seem to think it's cute. Well, I will have to take a look at that. That's really cool. Luffy, gotta go. Can I get a happy birthday before I go? Heck yes, Luffy. Happy freaking birthday. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, everybody wish Luppy a happy friggin' birthday. I did not see anywhere that this has a filament sensor. I didn't see any of that. It also did come with extra zip ties to kind of keep the cables tidy. Assembly was a breeze. Honestly, just super simple. I'm tired. <laughs> how's you? How's everybody doing out there? I'm a little tired. How you guys doing? Golden eighty six. It was cool seeing you at Earth. What was your personal favorite takeaway from the event? Uh, Gosh, of what I could remember. There was a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, Grant from 3D Musketeers scanned me, which is cool. The Prusa that had the fourth and fifth axis on it was really neat. We have an episode coming out on that tomorrow. Um, I liked seeing the, 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 the community build of the, the Sanjay from E3D head. That was really emotional. Um, really, really cool to see. The big takeaway from Earth from, and the Death Racers were fun. Uh, it was cool to see uh, Ellie's cocoa, uh, cocoa Press and Ellie. She's got the, the brand new Voron-inspired 3D printer. It's awesome. And it prints chocolate like crazy good. Like, it does chocolate overhangs and chocolate bridging. That E3D buggy that E3D released, that STL, she printed it in chocolate. What? Doesn't even make sense. Uh, there we go. Soval says, filament sensor port is reserved but not pre-installed. So it looks like something you can add after the fact. Thank you, Soval. RC Maniac, I forgot to ask Joel for a high five at Earth, but at least I shook his hand. Did you shake my hand? Did we meet? I have no recollection of this if it happened, man. I, I'm seriously. 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 I, I have no recollection. A Geek Toy Box, you got scanned. Sweet. Z-Man 3K, any recommendations for print settings for PVA filament? Finally got a nozzle to try it on my S5. Uh, PVA, let's see, a little bit lower on the temp, but it should be dried. Like, you have to really, really dry that PVA to make it print really well. So that would be my suggestion. Dry it. Deleted. My wife might support buying another 3D printer if it printed chocolate. It's amazing. 
Maple Glass, what's your favorite feature of the OS, uh, the Soval SV06 so far? Um, no specific feature stands out. Like it looks to be a well-rounded 3D printer. There, there's no feature specific to this machine that other machines don't have. They just look to have implemented it really well. So I don't know if there's really a favorite that I can call out. Uh, actually, you know what was really cool? The electronics box, the way it slotted on, slid down and then locks into place. You didn't have to screw it into place, which means that if you have to do anything with the, the plugs on the board, it's easy enough to take the box out and orient it the correct way, crack it open and then do the stuff and then put it back and you don't have to unscrew things. That's kind of cool. Chocolate infill is an odd mouth feel. Not bad, just odd. <laughs> I bet. I met you three times. We had good chats, but I don't think I introduced myself. That's, that's what happened. That's what happened. You didn't introduce yourself. Because if you would have, if you would have introduced yourself, I would have stood back and said, can you hear me? Can you see me? Obviously. Next time. Next time. Titan's Revenge. Have to go up a great stream, Joel. As always, talk soon. Hit you up on Twitter. Yes. Have a good one, Titan's Revenge. We'll chat soon, man. David B. Hi. It was nice meeting you in person, Earth. I see you're skydiving again. This printer looks like it's running good for you. Uh, I've had a really good experience with this machine, with the ability to set it up, get it going, and the print quality. Um, I believe the camera can now actually see this white, so it's, it's, it's darn decent. Like, I'm happy about it. Zombie Hedgehog, I didn't get to, uh, didn't get to see what Earth might go next time. You should. Earth was a fantastic show. Absolutely wonderful show. Oh. Oh. Oh, David, you said that to him? Good. I'm having fun here. This printer is uh, nice. We probably have, what, another 30 minutes left on the benchy? Maybe? Rolex, hey, yo, love meeting everyone at Earth, even a Joel High Five. Death Racers are a must keep. Yes, absolutely. 100%. The Death Racers were amazing at Earth. Hey, Soval, you're in the chat. Uh, next time, you should find your way to the Midwest Rep Rap Festival or the East Coast Rep Rap Festival, and you should use your machines to build a Death Racer, which is an RC car that hits other RC cars uh, in battle. I think you'd have a lot of fun. That's my challenge to you, Soval, is print a death racer with your machines. Dan Lazel, I don't know exactly which nozzles fit it. I don't know if there's a specific uh, thread on it, but uh, they give you a spare, so that's handy. Ooh. Peter Nixon, you should print out the popular Ghost with Legs STL that is going around out of this white filament. Yes, I should. In fact, the print farm behind me is printing them out because I keep getting orders on my uh, on my Etsy channel or on my Etsy link, Etsy store. Etsy store. I've got the ghosty up there. Could Aaron just print out a pet PET? I mean, I could. Zombie Hedgehog, I switched from Benchies to Swatch trucks. I see what you did. Hey, I'll tell you what. Zombie Hedgehog, see if you can post the link to your Swatch truck in the chat. I don't, I, it might be allowed. I don't know. YouTube is weird about links in chat. See if you can post it in there. Maybe, maybe someone else will download it. Soval 3D Tech, okay, may go to the boss applying for budget first. Awesome. I would love to see a Death Racer from you guys at Soval. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Oh, the ghost with legs out of chocolate. That would have been amazing. And then you could eat the ghost. Just eat the ghost. Nom, nom, nom. Mark G, do you think it's worth waiting for the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon? I 100% do. It's a fantastic machine that does multi-color 3D printing really easily. Um, it also prints things really fast and at really good quality. Uh, 
it's a, it's a wonderful machine with some great software. And uh, if you get one, I, you're going to be happy with it. Oh, there we go. Fix them, dude. Thank you. Hassan, how was your experience with the Bamboo Lab X1C so far at the moment? Uh, the, uh, the X1 Carbon from Bamboo, for me, has been decent. I, I do have a pre-Kickstarter version. They have done some slight hardware modifications to the ones that were fulfilled. And uh, I've had a lot of fun with mine. Uh, I, I haven't noticed a lot of errors. There have been... Uh, there have been some spaghetti incidents that it's caught, but I had turned off the functionality. Um, I've printed a lot of just little things quickly. I've printed some large things quickly. I did a multicolor like landscape waterfall thing. Um, I do have the multiplexer and the extra AMS units. So I can do a 16 color print now. And I'm just trying to figure out what has 16 colors that I should print. Evil Spy Boy, I just like the sheet on my X1C. Just got the PEI plate, but I haven't tried anything with that yet because it talks about not being able to do things like flow control. Oh, that's interesting. Karen, I love the bamboo, but I've gotten some more spaghetti in the last couple days. I think it's a change in weather. It definitely could be. Weather is will affect your 3D printing. DeWitt, the human body, lots of colors. A 16 color bonsai bill. Hey, I still have. Uh... <laughs> I still got the big. I got the big bonsai bill here. There we go. Still got the big one. I don't know. How would you do 16 colors in this, though? I just, I don't know how that would work. A Super Mario statue, ooh. Ricky B, I just ordered a Soval SV06. Yeah, for 239 right now, uh, it's the early bird, obviously, and a link below has an option where you can win one, but at, I, I sincerely believe that $239 US for this machine is a good deal. You get a lot of great current features for 3D printers that allow it to print really well my only concern is that this is my first experience with it, and I haven't put it through hundreds and hundreds of hours of 3D printing to really judge it. But just from the box opening, the assembly, and the printing experience so far, it looks to be like it very much could be worth the 239 price tag that's on it for the early bird. Okay, and normal price takes it to 279. I'm going to be honest with you. 279 still feels like a decent price for this 3D printer. There you go. Sleeping Savage, do you a printer? <laughs> do you have a printer, my guess? Uh, that's like your go-to printer. Ah, great question. So, my go-to printer, uh, I like to say it's always the machine close to me with loaded with the filament that I need and my slicers open on my computer. The, uh, the ability for a 3D printer to be like my go-to is it really, it varies because sometimes I'm printing specific things with a specific material and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do hundreds of these. And then since I have it, I have it all configured for this one machine, I just go, 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 go. And, and that could be my, my go-to 3D printer. Other times, um, like this, I'm having a great time printing on this because the quality is there and even at doubling the speed. So I know that I could like, I could throw some things to this, maybe some Etsy orders, maybe some gifts and just get them printed and that would be my go-to machine. Um, it, it varies, it really, really varies. 3D Printing Geek, I loved your really huge bearded pumpkin. Oh, me too. That was, oh. That was a lot of fun. I still have, uh... <laughs> oh wait, I can put it right there, there we go. Whoa, -ho 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 -ho. I am the bearded pumpkin. Ho -ho. 
Yeah, this one, it's so I could, I could drop this out of a plane and it'd be fine. So if you know anyone with a plane that wants to drop it out of it, that'd be great. That's what I'm thinking. Zombie Hedgehog, this is ender size, right? Yeah, 220 by 220 by 250. That's the X, Y, and Z or Z. Geeky Toy Box, Prusa has MMU2 updates in beta. Ooh, can't wait to see what's going on there. Uh, Mark G, did they talk about the error prompt on the X1 Carbon you called out when there's a pop-up screen instead of just automatically stopping? Ah, so that. So when I had that big spaghetti fail on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, it did recognize the spaghetti and it did alert me even though I was asleep. I had turned off the option to automatically stop because I was getting some false positives before and I just wanted it to complete. Unfortunately, it means that um, when it's real spaghetti happened, then there was a uh, catastrophe. RC Maniac, I know someone with a plane. Would you be content with being in a World War II training plane that is an open cabin? I mean, that sounds like fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. I think all options are on the table, don't you? John Stern, what's up, buddy? John, I finally got to meet in person at Maker Fair OC. Wonderful human. Highly suggest you say hi, John Stern. Diops, will you review the BQ Huracan? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. They haven't reached out. That'd be interesting. Imagine two form Cry Wolf. That's right. The Bamboo Lab, Axe Carbon, Cried Wolf. And look what happened. The wolf ate all the, the plastic. <laughs> That's amazing. A 3D printed parachute, sure. I wonder if you could. Not like 3D print the actual parachute, but what if all of the connector bits for the parachute were 3D printed? That would be a trial by fire right there. Oh man, that'd be great. Zombie Hedgehog, I wish the BQ had a proper motion system. Uh, I'm not familiar with it, and so I'm not, I'm not aware of the motion system. I will have to look that up. Freedom Carman, Joel, I printed a Benchy in one minute. It was at 1% size on my resin printer. Well, you could print it in half a minute if it was 0.5% size. I just helped you. Oh. Midnight Giant, what's up? Oh, man. Midnight Giant had an amazing booth at Earth because he went different. Like 3D Gloop, you saw 3D Gloop's booth and Repcord's booth at Murph. Now at Earth, it was kind of similar in how it's an open concept sort of thing. Midnight Giant did some 3D prints with some 4x4s, and he, he was like, he was like a medieval armorer right there, just at the end of an aisle. It was amazing to see. 3D Printing Geek, how often do you have to deal with failed prints? Uh, sometimes multiple times per day. Sometimes I can go a couple weeks without a failed print. Yeah. How are we doing? Look at it go. Remember, I upped the speed to 200, and it's this is what it's looking like. It's looking good. I'm happy with it. Robert A. Okay, if you could only if you could keep only three printers, what would they be? Let's see. I would take my Prusa Mark 3S Plus because it's I, I know its reliability. I would take the GMAX 2 because it's large format and I've got thousands of hours on it and I know it's reliable as well. And then I would take a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon because of the speed if I needed to get things done super quickly. There we go. Schaffner, does the V400 require 
Internet. I live on a mountain and use a mobile hotspot. It does not. The V400 does not require internet, but sometimes it likes to go out onto the internet if, if need be. Like, it can use the internet, it's not required. Are you kidding? Any updates on that ceramic 3D printer? Uh, it's in the closet right over there, and if someone wants it, they can have it. Like, I, I just want to give it away. If you know of anyone local to me that wants it, uh, I'll set it out on the street and they can pick it up. <laughs> The 3D Gloop Godzilla was amazing. Yes, that was by Jordan, who goes by Mad Monkey on Twitter. If you go look up Mad Monkey on Twitter, Mad Underbar Monkey 01, something like that. He's got a lot of pictures of it. It looks sweet. Andrew Osmond, any stringing? No, nope, no stringing so far. Again, we're printing at 185, 195, and so um, it's not really melty plastic time. It's like the minimal temp for melty, I think. Predator 670, does this come in different colors besides blue? I don't know. You'd have to ask Soval. I believe they're in the chat. The next decade, I'll take it. I'll pay for shipping. <laughs> um, we'll talk. I'll, I'll get something formal together. There are some parts that I might want on it, but also I kind of want it to go. Uh, I just want, I'm, I'm not going to ship it. It's really heavy. <laughs> Morton Upshot, it comes in any color you want if you print your parts. That's a good point. Oi, Medic, hey, what's going on? How's everybody doing? I gotta see if anybody's texted. My wife doing good? Let's see. Oh, someone bought something on Etsy. Cool. My wife said everything's all good. We're doing good. Doing good. Oh, it only comes in sky blue. I'm sorry. I guess if you, uh, if you're handy with the CAD, you could always print out your own parts. I'm oh, sorry, you're looking at my nose. I apologize. <laughs> Better print another ghost. I know. I got I only have uh I only have one machine doing ghosts on the farm right now. But uh yeah. Yeah, everybody's uh everybody's going to Etsy wants the ghosts. Dragonstorm, new to 3D printing. You're the best for info. Ah, oh, thank you. It's really kind of you. I do my best. I know there's lots of other channels as well that have lots of good info on 3D printing. I just appreciate you. Uh, you give me a watch. I really appreciate that. Nate Winter, is the printer really that quiet or is the mic far away? Well, there we go. I'm this close to the printer and it's this quiet. It's been a quiet machine. I've been really impressed with it. Wayne, trim those no hairs. No hairs. Karen, grab the tweezers. Do I get a, do I get a boogie showing? Sorry. Imagine it's too foreign boogers. <laughs> Morton Upshot, what a glorious nose it is. It is glorious. Uh, Shreyas, what should I do if I get lines on my 3D print? It is like I get lines of separation or like an overhang line. Um... Is the filament not stacking like it's supposed to? I don't really know exactly what you're, what you're saying. I have a nice nose hair trimmer. I could send it to you. I'll even rinse it first. Oh, John, that's really kind of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, a used nose hair trimmer properly rinsed is exactly what's on my list of things that I want. In fact, of the list of things that I want, if you look at the top of the list, it's that. I can just check that off my list. John, you're, you're an angel. You're a nose hair angel. Legacy of Bob, what's up? Just yell, I like your trade show visits and streams best, but all of your content is good. Thank you. I really, um, well, Jess, Jess L, that is, 
really kind of you, but what's, what it makes me so happy about it is that's the stuff I love bringing to you. Because when we go to trade shows, like industrial trade shows, no one is really giving you good trade show content. For the longest time, industrial and professional shows have just been blogs and website articles and hoity-toity people in suits, marketing people telling you um, talking points. I think that uh, one of the best things that I've ever done is the show and telling live stream from the Rapid Show last year when we had engineers and scientists bring really cool stuff up on stage for us to take a look at. And it was glorious. And I can't wait to do more of that. I can't wait. Like I see it, Bob. Great to meet you as well, my friend. My goodness. Mad Monkey Makes. Hey, Jordan, there you are. I'll print you a giant tweezer. Would ya? It'd be great. For my giant nose, right? <laughs> Mad J's too far. I like seeing those rocket parts, right? Those were cool. Those were so cool. I really enjoyed seeing those. This print is going to speed up when it doesn't have to travel back and forth to the bow of the boat. It still has a little bit to go there. Oh, look at that. We are seeing a little bit of wisps, a little bit of stringy there. A little bit. Are you kidding? I agree. Show and telling was the best part of that show. Yeah. Geek Toy Box, what's your next event on the calendar? We've been at like the last three. <laughs> next event. Uh, for us, next week we are in Malta with Construct 3D, that 3D printer that Jacob and his mom, Therese, uh, that company they put together. We're going to be in Malta showcasing that machine and some incredible projects that it can do. And we're also talking to some other people on the island country of Malta just to kind of show what they do. And I'm going to see Joe Kasha, 3D maker noob, of course. Um, after that, uh, we're heading to Form Next in Frankfurt, Germany. And that should be a lot of fun. Be there for a couple days and visit some booths and see some cool stuff. Uh, after that, we do have the December 15th live stream. It's not at an event, but we're traveling somewhere for it. I don't want to give it away quite yet, but a lot will be revealed for that soon. Zombie Hedgehog, yes, this model is pre-sliced. Uh, for these streams, what I like to do is ask them to pre-slice a model and send it to me. And, uh, that way, it takes me messing up out of the equation. I just have to copy a G-code file. Over. That's what I want. Predator 720, uh, 7, 670, how many printers do you have in your print farm? Right now, I have 18 Prusa Mark 3S Plus 3D printers in the print farm, which is right back there. And then over there, I've got my G-Max, a couple Cobra Maxes, and the, uh, the Mingda Magician for large prints that are needed. Is the part cooling fan mounted to a metal bracket? Let's take a look. Uh, it looks to be the all-encompassing bracket. I don't know if it's metal. It looks shiny, but plastic shiny, so I don't know. The next decade. Oh, I talked to them. I really want to construct one. It looks great. It looks really, really great. And I can't wait to show you what we're doing with it. It's going to be really, really great. Karen, I wish there was more stuff in Ireland. I never see anything here. Hey, Producer David, I know you're watching. Let's find something to go to Ireland for. I want to go to a pub in Ireland and have a proper Guinness. Monkey Butler Labs, hey, there you are. Hi, Joel. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. The next decade, send them my best. Them being Jacob and Therese. Uh, they are super kind. Super Duper kind, such good people. Samuel Walker, what do you print most with the print farm? So the print farm, like I said, is behind this wall right there. Um, some of the longest prints, let's see, I did a lot of the dragons when the dragons were the big craze going on. I've done some batch manufacturing jobs, one for uh, um, Bill for his Chameleon 3D, one for Danielle, and Steam Connection for the little Scobots and the Etgar bots. Um, I just did a recent job with for the the uh, the Hat Cat uh, 
the USB hacking tool. Um, if you know Alex Lind from uh, Hack5, he's a part of it, so I'm gonna talk to him tonight more about it. Um, I've been doing some, like people are ordering ghosts right now on the Etsy shop, and so I'm printing those back there. But I printed a lot of dragons, like hundreds of dragons back there. Well, that's right. In Ireland is the Tobin Castle. That's right. And my producer, David, is producer David Tobin. So, yeah, I guess we do have to kind of go there. Nero. It does look very interesting. It does look interesting, Taylor. I think you'd like it. Media Man, hello. David Wheeler, pub? Guinness? What more reason do you need? Oh, and David, producer David says the Tobin Castle is in Kilkenny, Ireland. You know what also is in Kilkenny? Kilkenny Irish Ale. Oh, it's wonderful. Shreya Gore, what is the best budget 3D printer you recommend? That consistently changes because I get the chance to test a lot of budget 3D printers, such as this one. Because uh, right now, for pre-sale or the early bird, whatever they call it, it's $239 US. It comes with a lot of advanced features. That's pretty good. Um, so right now, this, this is one of them. Um, uh, what are some of the other ones I've tried? I don't really remember. I, there's so many of them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough. But, I mean, this one's not bad. And you get to see it right now. John Stern, are you selling Vaymond Valorant Ghosts? Uh, I don't watch that show. I know what you're talking about, but I don't watch that show, so I, I don't know. Kenneth Ferguson, I had to step out. Did you test the magnet on the bed to see how strong it was? I haven't yet. It's strongish. It is strongish. Is there a maintenance schedule or program for this printer? Um, printers like this, uh, like a maintenance schedule, I mean, you should check things weekly, monthly, whatever, but it's, it's similar to lots of other 3D printers. Alex Swavely, uh, Maker Central is only one island away. I know. Trey Gore, will there be a full video review on this printer? Uh, no. There won't. Um, I can print some things for people. But, uh, and I'll, I'll just, just for full transparency, Soval is the one that is sponsoring this stream. And because I've taken a sponsorship fee for showing this 3D printer, I don't think it's ethical for me to provide a review for this printer. And so I'm not going to. I just wanna make everything transparent. I will use it. I will show you things from it. But an official review, I'm not going to do because I have taken money in from this company to show this machine. And so I don't wanna, I don't wanna be in an ethical place, I shouldn't. So I'm just, I, there's no review planned for this 3D printer. Three D printing geek. The problem with the problem with most budget three D printers is they come and go so fast. Well, name me a budget three D printer that is not an Ender three clone. I'm sure they're out there. Well, but name one. Hey, Bill. Yeah, Bill's in the chat. Prints looking pretty decent so far. Uh, Bill, I don't know if you were here earlier, but I did turn up, I just, there's speed, and I set it to 200%. So this is going twice as fast. Steve Builds, what's going on? Look at you, a member for 10 months. If you'd like to become a YouTube member here, there's a button down below. You can click it, and you get, um, you get to have a little special icon next to your name, and you can use special uh, emotes, I believe. King Rune KP3S, that is true. Positron, is it budget though? The Positron is not a budget 3D printer, Grant. When I talked to Jason over at the LDO booth, they're expecting the kit to be V0.1 priced.
Which is better, ultrasonic bath or any cubic wash and cure plus? So um, any resin 3D print you drop in a wash and cure, it's just a bucket with an agitator at the bottom. And so it's going to clean as well as slightly moving isopropyl alcohol can clean something. When you put it in an ultrasonic bath, it's gonna be able to get some of the surface uncured resin off better. Uh, that said though, I, you should always provide some sort of manual removal of stuff on your print. Like a, it, dip it in isopropyl alcohol and then use a soft bristle, soft bristle brush to kind of get some of the surface residue off and then let it go in the IPA and you end up with a much, much better part. Hey, Paul Cumber, how you doing, man? Oh, the GDI fast. Is it budget though? There you go, DeWitt. Budget is a relative term depending on an individual's actual budget. I consider this at early bird pricing to be a budget 3D printer because its price tag is $239 US. I would say that anything sub 250 could be considered budget 3D printer. Am I wrong? You go walk that dog, Alex. Joe Forgotten, you're the coolest. David B, it's nice to see rails and bushings instead of rollers. What kind of power supply and logic board is used? Logic board, I don't know. Power supply, it is a, um, it is a power supply. <laughs> it is not name brand. What do you prefer, the wheels, rails, or the rods? Um, I don't like roller wheels. I like, I like rails and I like rods. Stefan Lupa, hi Joel, greetings from India. It's just pre-order the, the Soval SV06. Hello, Stefan, good to have you on the show. Brian Vines is in the house. Be prepared for the dad jokes. Hobbit, I'm kind of ambivalent about this printer. It's another clone, but it's not another Ender and seems like a pretty nice clone. I am similar in thinking. For 239, you're getting a really decent and updated feature set on a 3D printer with a fairly standard build volume. And at 200% speed, it's making a decent boat. I mean, lots of other prints need to happen, but I mean, right now, that's not bad. Bill Steele, my friend, this would be a good candidate for the Chameleon 3D. Legacy of Bob, member for 22 months. Bless your kind heart. I know you have to run. Thanks for joining us on the show. Zombie Hedgehog, did you see the interesting rod rails on the KP5L? It's a very clean design that seems to be good. I have not seen that. I'll have to look it up after the show. Are the rods in this printer eight millimeters or 10 millimeters? Well, let's see if we can find out. Eight. These are eight millimeter rods. Oh. Winter House, this seems quite comparable to the Ender 3 S1. Would you pick one over the other? Uh, right now, if this is the print quality I can expect on this machine using PLA, I would pick this over the Ender 3 S1 because it is far less expensive. John Oritz, they are eight millimeter rods. We're getting to the end of a benchy here, folks. That's kind of exciting. I am getting, I am hearing a slight bit of bearing rattle. Just a little bit. Just a, a teensy tiny bit. John Oritz, I actually took out my calipers and I measured for you. I know this is pre-sliced, but do we know the layer height? My guess is 0 0.2. Uh, wait a minute. Since they are probably using Cura and the steam engine, 
to do the slicing, my guess is if I open that up in a text editor, I should be able to see the settings used. Uh, layer height, 0 0.2 millimeters. Oh, and it's generated, so they're using Creality Slicer 1.5.0. I don't know how that translates. I don't know how that translates into which flavor of, cur like current Cura is, is at a different version number. Morbius, this is literally a Prusa with a better, lighter extruder for a quarter of the price. I don't think it's exactly a Prusa. There are feature sets, or there are some features that aren't here. And obviously the Prusa itself, at least in my experience, I have a lot more time on it. And so I can't really call it a Prusa, but I see what you're meaning. And I think it's interesting because there are a lot of features on the SV06 that make it attractive and at the 239 early bird price point, make it really attractive. Oh, thanks for joining us, John Stern. Love having you on the show, man. What is a good beginner 3D printer for someone who has a disability in one arm or hand? Well, Benjamin Jones, I don't know the answer to that question. And I don't want to bother you with more questions about your disability, but it, 3D printing is accessible. There's lots of people that do it that don't have full access to, to both hands. I, it really just depends on what you're unable to do with your disability, but just know there's going to be some ways around it. Everything here I've been able to do with, uh, with one hand except load the filament. I had to, I had to uh, squeeze the, I had to squeeze the filament or, or the arm on the extruder and then push in the filament. So there might be a way through the menu to automatically load it once, it's, once it touches the gears. And if so, then that's a one-handed operation as well. Mark G, is the Creality CR10S5 still worth buying for big prints in 2022? I don't know what the price on the uh, CR10S5 is, but it is, the S5 I believe is 500 by 500 by 500, right? Kind of crazy. I don't know what the price on it is though but you've got um, any cubic with the Cobra Max and you've got that large magician, both of which have had great prints and they are like 500 bucks, five, 600 bucks. I don't know what the uh, CR10S5 is now, but it really depends on price. Bill Steele, Joel just ordered one. We'll do a full test on it. So Vol, if you're still in the chat, that's Bill from Chameleon 3D and he will get multicolor prints on the SV06. Now here's the one thing to look at. Look at the smokestack. We did 200% speed and it's still able to properly cool that to look good. Mark G, okay, CR10S5 is $700. I mean, if you need that size, Monkey Butler Labs. Yeah, I know. I'll get there. Whoa! It just took off, man. Okay. The print is done. It's still a little bit bright, isn't it? It's still a little bit bright. Let's, um... Okay. I'll turn it way down. And then... Held on good. You can see creative tools there, ct3d.xyz. Bottom layers look great. Uh, can you read the text on the back? Nope, <laughs> I sure can't. Let's take, so there's the little, see that was from right there, that piece, that was from the nozzle. In fact. Whoa, there it went. Not bad. Not bad at all. I know we were going super fast, or at least 200% speed, 
it doesn't seem like there's a lot of artifacts, and we're printing with white filament, so we would have seen it pretty easily, but I don't know, for, for a live stream Benchy, that's not too bad. Can you show the sides of the Benchy? Sides of the Benchy. I just showed you the sides. Do you need, here, I can, I'll, I'll move it around a little bit more. So you can see that's a seam line right there. That little black spot's a booger. You can see that there's a, here, let me get, yeah. So, right here, there's a texture difference to right here, and I think that's because we had turned up the speed. <clears throat> that looks good on down below. Look at that. Mike Talbot, hey, thanks for becoming a member. Resin Mini, so what is 200% uh, speed? I don't know for sure. Um, Soval's still in the chat, you can ask them. Uh, yeah, Ronald DHS, nice boat. I agree, it is a nice boat. I, th I think the printer did an absolutely fine job on this. There's a little bit of um, right there. Just because the filament, it was, it's like not a wisp, but you can tell it's pulling off and it's a little bit melty. But really, I mean, if I'm complaining, if I'm complaining, oh, Monkey Labs, don't worry about it. I promise you. Well, there we go. That, um, hey, everybody. <laughs> so there we go. That, that is the Soval SV. Zero six. There we go. That little boat right there. Um, I'm really happy with the way the stream went. The build was great of the SV06. Um, we had that G code problem in the beginning when they didn't send the right G code. They sent the new G code, and Soval was in the chat. Soval and team, uh, thank you so much for being in the chat and answering people's questions. This printer is $239. It's an early bird price, and you can find a link down in the description. And there's a way you can win one. You can click a link down there as well. Uh, I've, uh, I've had a good time with this. I've had a really good time with this. And I'm really thankful that Soval made this possible. Soval, I think you have a really decent machine on your hands at a really competitive price. And I hope you see some success from it. I'm going to do some more prints on this thing because I like it. <laughs> I love it. Well, listen, uh, thanks for everybody for joining. For those who threw uh, a few dollars in, that's really kind of you. I appreciate it. It's now 3.30 my time, and uh, I'm thirsty and hungry, and I, I'm going to go eat. So I love you all, and I'll see you on the next one. Doot, 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 boat. <laughs>